So in this episode, we're going to be looking at keyboards, and I want to look at what I consider to be the two best keyboards for DaVinci Resolve users today. And I'm also going to reveal which one I personally use in my day-to-day -day workflow. Also, in a few weeks' time, I want to do a big episode where I'm going to cover every single bit of kit that I've got running in the studio, from the advanced panel to the monitors, right down to the USB hub and chargers and switches and all that sort of stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that episode. And to get that episode going, I've had to have a bit of a clear out. And I have to confess, I didn't realize I was such a serial hoarder, but I have got so many keyboards that it's time to clear a few out, ready to get some new ones in. I've got an Avid keyboard here, PC with some weird connector on the end of it. That's gotta be from the mid nineties, that's going. Avid for Mac with little stickers on it because I couldn't actually afford a proper color coded keyboard. Final Cut Pro 7. This one. This is really grubby and all broken. This is the one I use on set. This has been pretty much around the world with me. Time to go. Avid keyboard for the Mac with color coding. Avid keyboard for the PC with color coding. Still in its box. That has been sitting downstairs for about six years, I think. DaVinci Resolve color coded keyboard. This has now been replaced. Windows keyboard. Immaculate condition, hardly used. The Apple Magic Keyboard. This is the one that comes with the Mac Pro 2019 system that cost me £15,000 and it's the worst keyboard I've ever used. The buttons stick, it types itself, that is going. A jog shuttle from the late 90s. I'm going to keep that. And there's one more keyboard that I can't throw out because it's actually attached to the advanced panel, but I don't use it. So let's have a look at the two keyboards that I do think are good for DaVinci Resolve users. The first one is the Logic Keyboard. This is the Astra Backlit DaVinci Resolve dedicated color-coded keyboard. Uh, this one's for the Mac. So yes, this does look dark, but this is the environment I work in a lot of the time. So for me, I want a backlit keyboard. So both the keyboards I'm gonna show you that I recommend for DaVinci Resolve are both have backlighting. So let's switch this one on. This is the Logic Keyboard. This is the dedicated DaVinci Resolve keycaps. So it's all assigned exactly how the software operates in DaVinci Resolve. So this has five levels of brightness. And I think you only need to be on number one. That is enough illumination for me to be able to see the keys really clearly. Now I'm gonna do the rest of the filming with some lights on so you can actually see the keyboard in a bit more detail. So I've been working with this one for about a week now. I'm really enjoying using it. It's got a good solid feel. Uh, apparently it weighs 950 grams. I've not actually weighed it, but it feels good and solid. Let me show you how it compares in size. So this is my original Mac keyboard. So it's a little bit wider and a little bit longer. And it's certainly a little bit higher because it's got like a stand at the back. It's like raised back. And compared to a regular Windows keyboard, similar sort of thing. It's almost the same size actually as the Windows keyboard. So it's just a little bit bigger. So it's connected via USB. There's two USB sockets on there. One, so you could go to something like a KVM extender. There's also a USB socket on the back so you can plug in little thumb drives or whatever you want. That means it's obviously just plug and play. There's no software or anything. You just plug it in and off you go. So the keys have got a really good feel to them, but the main feature of this keyboard is of course that you've got all the keyboard shortcuts printed on there. So you can find your shortcuts really easily. The color coding on there is quite easy to understand. Basically you've got blue is for the color page and the purple color is for editing functions. And then you've obviously got some crossover in there as well. And you see that your command and option and shift keys are quite clearly different colors. And that is because you've got little text here. So for example, if we look at this one here, it says printer light and that's got a purple and a blue stamp next to it. So that means I have to press Alt and Command and this button to enable printer lights. So let me just show you how we would do that in the software. So in DaVinci Resolve to activate the printer lights, you basically go up to the color menu here and you see down at the bottom it says printer light hotkeys and you just literally click this and it then activates the printer light hotkeys, which basically means you can use your numeric keypad to dial in a RGB value, which is related to the offset control here in the color page. So it's the equivalent of doing this, but by single points using your numeric keypad. So you see on this numeric keypad, the advantage of this is we've got the actual colors printed on there. So this is up red, one point, up red, another point, down red, one point, down red, another point, blue, down. And then if we go to green, the same. So you're just moving up and down in one point, and that is basically giving us a color grade. So you're using your numeric keypad to color grade. So it's a really nice way of doing it. So obviously if I go to magenta, it's adjusting red and blue at the same time. 
Now you can do this on any keyboard, but the fact that this keyboard has got the colors printed on the numbers makes it a lot easier, especially when you're just starting out and getting used to how that works. So printer lights are a really good way of really quickly grading. It's a really good starting point. So this is a really great keyboard to use. It costs about £130 in the UK, that's including VAT. So that's the DaVinci Resolve dedicated keyboard from Logic with the backlit. The next one I want to look at is the MX Keys by Logitech. This is not colour coded, this is just a straight keyboard. This one's for the Mac. So let's have a look at it. So we're back in my grading lighting conditions and this keyboard is also backlit, but it has some quite clever technology in it. It has automatic motion sensors in there. So as my hands come towards the keyboard, it automatically backlights for me and it will stay backlit while I'm working on it. Now I can adjust the backlighting up here. So you can have it as soft or as high as you want. And in fact, you can have it on full all the time if you want to. But the beauty of having it come on automatically is it saves the battery power in there. This is running off a Bluetooth connection, so obviously it is going to drain battery. I've had this one running for a couple of months on and off, and I've only charged it twice so far. So watch again, I just bring my hands in and it automatically lights up. It's just lovely. So let's just do a quick size comparison. Here is the Windows keyboard, so it is smaller than the Windows keyboard. And this is a Mac Pro keyboard, and it is actually just about the same size as that. To me, it feels just a little bit smaller than the Logic keyboard, and that sort of works for me. I've got quite small hands anyway, so that actually works for me. Weight-wise, it's coming in at 810 grams, apparently, so it's slightly lighter than the Logic keyboard. And this is actually wireless, so what you can actually do with this that's really neat is you can control three different devices. So you've got Assign 1, Assign 2, and Assign 3. So I've got mine set to Assign 1 is Bluetooth, and that's going to my main Mac grading system. Uh, assign number 2 is going to my PC, which controls my scopes. I've got my Omniscopes running on there. And that's connected via this little USB device thing. It's like a little USB receiver, and that's, that's included with the system. And then my third one I've actually got connected to my iPhone, so that's just, again, a Bluetooth connection connection. And also what you can do is use these buttons up here to assign apps. So I've actually got different apps that can open just by pressing this. So it's a really good multi-function keyboard. So all that is assigned with this software that comes with the system. So let's just have a quick look at that. So the software is really easy to use. I basically can assign any application to these keys here. You can go to this easy switch here and I can assign three different computers. Oh, I've got my iPhone on here and they're just assigned to these buttons. So it charges via USB-C. There is no USB connector on here for adding thumb drives and that sort of thing. And apparently it runs for about five months without charging it if you don't use the backlighting operation. So it really has got a great feel. It's a good solid bit of kit. I love the multi-device capability. I love being able to assign apps on it. The tactile keys feel really good. It's a really good solid keyboard. This is coming in at just slightly cheaper than the Logic one. It's 120 pounds, including VAT. So that's obviously at today's prices. So if you are enjoying this episode so far, you might want to check out some of my more in-depth Resolve tutorials. They'll appear in a box somewhere around about here. But let's have a look at which keyboard I'm actually using now in my day-to-day -day workflow. So the Logic keyboard with the custom DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts on there, I think this is a brilliant keyboard if you're a colorist who only goes in the edit page every now and again or vice versa. This is a good, solid keyboard. It's a really nice to use keyboard. But the one I'm using all the time is the Logitech MX keyboard. I love this keyboard. I'm going to put links to both of them in the description. This is not a sponsored video. I paid for this with my own money and I absolutely love it. So I hope this has been good. Look out for that studio tour in a few weeks. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.